Gentlemen, you have just witnessed an exhibition. The physical prowess of America's foremost medical student, the future Dr. William G. Davis. Is not a strong mind more important than a strong arm? With that physique, <clears throat> plus his mentality, Davis should go far in the profession. Go far? Why, well, I intend to have the name of Davis placed along with Hippocrates, Galen, Harvey, and Buster. <laughs> More probably with Mesmer and Cagliostro. Men of old were loath to speak, lest the word that they could not make good should shame them. There. The article speaks the dignity and wisdom of the audience. Not the wisdom and dignity of the Orient, merely the opinion of one humble person. Bear in mind, the fool may mouth with ease the words the thinker has evolved with painful effort. What a chance I'll have as a horse doctor. Say, Davis, uh, does G. Wu get all this in pipe dreams? I sometimes wonder myself. Doubt is the drum of fear. As to my pipe, the smoke is that of pure tobacco. You were referring to opium, however. Yes? Yes, we Orientals do indulge. But due to character and antecedent, it is a harmless diversion to us. You Westerners deny that fact because you know your limitations. You mean we do not? As far as material things are concerned, perhaps not. But one must make you great allowances. You are overwhelmed with progress and speed, which might make any diversion become a vice. 
compliments uh, to your diplomacy, but not to your choice of diversion. With several thousand years of wisdom behind him, Ji Wu need not apologize for his country. China was already highly civilized when the people of the Western world were still savages. It is true that the use of opium is a plague when sought as continual retreat. Your country may well be proud to have the worthy interpreter of her philosophy yes. and ideals, Ji Wu. It is tall weight that counts, my friend, not mere words. Nature's best use of genius is to make other men think, to stir up things so sedimentation does not take place, and to keep the stream of public opinion flowing so that it will purify itself. Pathetic. She was just about to be confined. Skull crushed. Malvern. Cyanotic. Cyanotic? how you accomplish what seemed to be impossible. Davis, you have done something that will go down in history. Hoffman's tooth again, I suppose. I bet I'm still the only man around who's strong enough to pull a mortar. No, it wasn't Mrs. Hoffman's tooth. A patient paid ten dollars on him account. Oh. And I was thinking, you need so many things. Spend the money with them handy for your folks. That new pump. That is them to them. Oh, the boy with the bad knee. Was he in this morning? Yes, he can. How is my special patient, the future Mrs. W.G. Davis? Darling, are you still planning that? With all your responsibility? Sure, I am. You're getting me wet. Besides, that's very important. <laughs>
Chi Wu. Come in, my friend. It is said to touch the hand of an old friend is like living a memory over again. It must be a strong east wind that brings you back here. Yes, yes. An interest in your Red Cross. And you, my friend, how is your health? But come, sit down. Labor is the only prayer that is ever answered. But my friend, great shadows lie upon your face. Do they portend shadows within? Frankness beget frankness, Ji Wu. And lately old Morpheus fails to send upon me. But come, let us partake of some of your native brew. Let not the long separation under our understanding. Unburden yourself, my friend. You are not the same person I knew in college. I could stand the rest of you. The time does not permit. It is perhaps diversion you need. for rest. Inko, Inko. Yes, take your hat and coat off. Did you stop at the clinic? Yes. Darling, I've been doing a great deal of thinking and decided we should be married right away. I feel good, too. Mrs. Wilkins just made the last payment on her baby. I mean it, dear. 
I have an idea that will make us a fortune. And what is this idea that's to bring the world to your feet? Ah, you wait and see. Dr. Davis is more remarkable than you think. Is he? I will. You're leaving your case. No, I won't need it. So, the day's come that you don't need a case. The case is coming to you. Then you won't be late? No. Ladies and gentlemen, just step right in close. All right, let the little fellow in. All right, that's... It. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me demonstrate to you once more this marvelous article. Step right up, folks, and I'll show you the secret. Now, first, you smear a little on the broken article like that. Then you push the two pieces together like that. There you are. Look at that. Gummy gooey, the sticky mooey that is guaranteed to stick anything together from the crystal of your watch to your mother-in-law's mouth. And again, I repeat, it doesn't take any secret. There's no secret to it at all. It doesn't take you, and it doesn't take me. All it takes is it, the how, knowing how to do it. Now, it means bottles, dishes, furniture, broken friendships, and broken hearts. Now, step right up, folks, and the secret of gooey movie is yours for the sum of one quarter. Just Think of it, ladies and gentlemen, one fourth of a dollar, 25 cents. Think of it. Oh, dear, I thought you'd never come. Go to bed, dear. Please don't do anything more tonight. I have work to do.
Sally Hype. I bump into these kind of birds every now and then. Look. Forty bucks. And this flea bitten, dope head, starving to death. Well, if it ain't his, he's a honest fellow, all right. Hmm. Honest. You don't know anything about these snowbirds. They're all thieves. When they get hooked, they have no feeling to eat. The only dough they spend is on the stuff. Dear? Oh, hello, dear. What are you doing? I've worked out a new formula, an idea that's going to bring big results. Selling medicine by demonstration. How does that sound to you? You mean to talk on medicine to an audience of people and then let them buy it? Right. But, Will, that would not be ethical. Well, supposing the profession does look at it that way. They are still using the oath of Hippocrates as the basis for our modern medical ethics. Yet, it came into use in the 5th century B.C. I can't see anything wrong if my preparation has merit. Take Dr. Kane. He has a good family remedy and could sell much more by bringing it before the public direct. Selling medicine like a common huckster? It can be done in a dignified manner. Think, dear, the good I'll be doing. Solving health problems in a simple way. Well, perhaps your plan is all right. And this medicinal compound that I introduced to you this evening is one of the greatest discoveries in modern allopathy. A preparation containing efficacious ingredients hitherto unknown, unused, undreamed of in the formulating of any remedy. A preparation whose chief content is an element found far from our civilized country. And this preparation, people, is known as Quang Fang, the miracle cure. You may wonder, my friend, why a doctor of my standing speaks to one of the copious canopy of the starry skies rather than the recesses of a hall or amphitheater. You may question. Are you? My dear, you don't know what you're saying. You should be the first person in the world to know the consequences of all this. How could you defend such thoughts and actions? You speak as if I were an addict already and couldn't give it up. But my husband has willpower. Yes, Dr. Davis has unusual strength of purpose. Then perhaps there is some hope. Before discussing his particular case, though, I'd better tell you a few facts about drug addiction. Then you can draw your own conclusion. You see, the drug always finds the weakest spot in character for its attack. The daring or wayward type start using it to satisfy their craving for adventure while the uh, moral coward takes a drug to get the courage which he otherwise does not possess. In either case, it soon subordinates the will. The man whose personal life is not involved with strain or excitement naturally has more of a chance for a cure. There are a million addicts in the United States, and the cure is a terrific problem for each and every one of these tragic men and women. Realizing the opium problem in my country, I can appreciate yours. In China, we uprooted the opium puppy, prohibited importation, made a $36 million bonfire out of all the opium stores. Even though the other countries redrugged our nation for their own gain, we know that the greatest friend to drugs is ignorance. Its enemy, education. 
our true salvation lies in prevention of addiction. In the case of those unfortunate enough to have acquired the habit, the hope for a cure lies in the individual. It cannot be accomplished by re-drugging. The only cure is the will to be cured. I'm sorry to disturb you. Are we not successful? We have everything we need. In this little diversion, I find nothing else but rest. A man of your standard should know better. I have nothing more to say. I can take care of myself. Can you? what you've gone through, dear. Why shouldn't I be patient for another two weeks? <laughs> it's so silly. I feel like a newborn babe already. <laughs> All these years to me, you've been nothing else. How wonderful it'll be starting all over again. Yes. Yes, just one moment, please. right over. Why didn't you tell me before so I wouldn't have depended on you? How did I know my connection was going to be knocked off? If I don't get a pop right away, I'll go nuts. No one was calling. Hurry.
and Dr. Davis. He'll be in great pain for some time. Keep him under opiates. I wish you wouldn't look at me like that. You can take it out of the body, but you can't take it out of the mind. I'm sick and tired of your preaching and moralizing. My life is my own, and I'll live it just as I choose. Well, it's my life as well as yours, and you're not going to drag me down with two. You're deteriorating day by day, and I can't stand this. phenomena under the sun. Nature has made a remedy for everything that walks, talks, crawls, or creeps on the face of this earth. For the dog, there's dogwood. For the cat, catnip. For the bird, bird leaf. And for the human race, there's tiger, bat, stuff. Medicine whose ingredients nature placed in the earth long before the beast of Bruce stepped forth from his cave shook the mud off his back, stood on his hind legs, and declared himself man. the big squeeze this afternoon. I just got here myself. I guess he's inside casing a live one. I was hoping he was all gouged up so I could ask him for a buck for that testimony. I can tell at a glance what your trouble is. You have a tired feeling when you get up in the morning. A pain in the brattle vertebrae, the small of the back. A sore feeling in the vesic canal and the major domitium gland the uh, kidney region. Mm. Bright disease, my man. Bright disease. The old trouble of neglecting until it's too late. I was afraid that's what it was when you explained the symptoms in your talk. I'll... Uh, let me see. Uh, you were the man who spoke to my assistant a few days ago and asked if I'd take the case for a thousand dollars? It wasn't me. I didn't know it would be that much. But I got $350 with me, though. And if you'll take that as a down payment, I'll... Well, uh... Oh, boys. Oh, yes, burger. That testimony about having the tip of your heart shut off was great. What's on your mind, Dennison? One of the reps. Somebody let the door open and the healer froze. Ha! What's the loss of a rep? <laughs> you 
You boys know, of course, we uh, don't hold services tonight. Nicky. Take charge. that, will you? Why, one sniff and this fist will be kicked up like a million. <laughs> Where'd you get the rag, Kitty? God, wearing that, you look like the devil's concubine. The doctor put up for this. Ooh. David, huh? Hey, I thought I saw him coming from the 10 cent store this afternoon. If you'd look closer, you'd have seen it was just your own reflection in the window. Look what I got. Next to nature. Are you following me? Following you? Say, <laughs> I'm way ahead of you. When you get to 39th Street, why, uh, let me off. Ladies, ladies, let's not get vulgar yet. Ah, that was a sight. We ought to take a pop on that. I'm ready for a shot right now. Oh, I see you got grease there. In a few minutes, I'm going to watch that chandelier come down and bounce all over this room. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a Mexican route for you, eh? Say, don't you know what it means to get the ding? You're telling me I don't know how to handle my sweet margarita? No, no formality here. Now start anytime. Step right up, everybody, and take your best shot. Uh, Lena, you usually take C, don't you? You can shoot me if I don't with a needle. Sniff, you ought to know my connection. Don't be backward, Jimmy. Oh, the next guy that steals my brassiere, I'm going to sue him for non-support. <laughs> <laughs> Cocaine, eh? Well, as for mine, I'll take a bang. A bang? What are you going to do? Go to sleep on it? Oh, what can you expect? That guy was born in a bed. Say, listen, be careful you don't get a prickly. Now, don't you worry. Uh, I'm not going to shoot the main line if I know what I'm doing. Did you hear the one about the hop-headed wound of Penny Bank? Well? Well, he took another shot and then he wired the National City Bank if they wanted to merge with him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take each. Oh, you want a real drive. Well, here's the heroine. She takes a shot of H and joins the first flock of birds migrating south. All right, the marijuana cigarettes are mine. Okay, but don't smoke too many, or you might get the ding, remember. What's yours, Davis? Well, seeing you've got a whole can of morphine there to tune down on again, I'll take seat to start with. To start with? Oh, that means you're going to go every route tonight. Say, did you all hear this one? A, a guy was up in the district attorney's office, and the DA says to him, My man, you're charged with murder. The guy thinks for a minute, and he says, No, 
I couldn't be charged with murder because my credit ain't no good. That was punk. What of it? This is a festive occasion. For we are but fellow travelers along life's broad highway. So if any man can play the pipe, in God's name, let him play. Smith's story throws up the one about the wife who's defending herself on murder. She said, Your Honor, I didn't kill my husband. He was double-chinned, double-jointed, double-crossed, and he died of double pneumonia. Well, said the judge, it looks more to me like it's a double-barrel shotgun. Then she laughs and says, Oh, judge, don't mind those holes in his body. He was moth-eaten when I married him. <laughs> Say, did you know I got a special delivery cablegram from Velasco? To come to New York and play the lead in a show he's going to put on the biggest opera house in town. A show called The Virgin of the North. Oh, they figured it wasn't well enough for me. You know, lots of money to sold. My old yeah. man sells locomotives. Well. Last year, he sold 60,000 locomotives to one <laughs> railway station alone. Oh, yeah. I didn't tell you how I got the job with Velasco. I won beauty contests, 54 of them in the biggest states in the Union. Oh, yeah. St. Louis, Milwaukee, Kansas City. Why, when I was picked out of 20,000 oh. girls to be Miss Missouri, the millionaires were just crazy about me. What Vanderbilt was just about me. Oh, God. If, uh, if I give you a cigar, would you promise to smoke it in some powder factory? <laughs> oh, this bunch is so ignorant, they don't know class when they see it. I'm just wasting my time. Mm. Oh, say, did I tell you that a French count bought me a new auto last week? I mean, he bought me two new autos last week. <laughs> of course, you know, when I go on the stage, why the billionaires will be buying me yachts. You know, once I was on a yacht that was as big as the Titanic. The party ain't even started yet, and she's beginning to leap. Look. Why, he's silly. <laughs> Come on, Peter. You don't think there's anybody out there, do you? What? Has he got the bull horrors already? I know this bulls are watching. Bulls? <laughs> Say, what do you mean bulls? Don't you know that I gave every bull 24 hours to get out of town? <laughs> Say, did I tell you my father bought the old Morgan mansion on Fifth Avenue? You know, it's the biggest house I ever saw. Say, do you know next week when I go there to be an actress, I'm going to have 52 maids? That's enough, Lena. Now you're beginning to lie. I never was with such a loud bitten bunch before. Why, you're a bunch of hate. Come on, Lena. Why, you're having an effusion of the mouth. And with me present. Why, you people are looking at a man who can spell Lime King, Dr. Davis. The silver tongue salvationist who saves sick ridden suckers from cinerite to salvatite to soccer peters. Yes, friends, you are looking at a modern Count Cagliostro, Professor Davis, the greatest cracker pass of modern quackadomery. Why, I make more money than. <laughs> Now he's talking about money. Yeah, the bees and the honey. Too much loose talk about large sums of money. How's this for a change? Mm -hmm. I have to. I'm telling you, I have to. The hophead climbed to his lonely room and flopped upon the bed. There was a haze before his eyes and... Cobwebs in it. The hoochie gal is very neat. She dances and everything but her feet. She takes it up and she takes it down. She takes it in a way that shakes the town. Those mumbly pigs that are known as her legs are the apex of human perfection. But the plates of meat that you call her feet are bigger than those of the common beast. Forget her feet and consider her new. For nature hung curves where they do the most good. This is a terrible party. Everybody <laughs> here is silly. Hey, gang, would you like to see the figure that made 
course it's... Oh, this is the dance I didn't grieve. Everyone that saw it. Who's that to compare to me? Who can predict the all events ten years ahead? Who knows investment, politics, sociology? Well, you are looking at the known Dr. Avery. Master of men, master of women, master of property. Master of anything that walks, talks, draws, or creeps on the face of this earth. Oh, oh, there it goes. I told you she'd get the ding. I can't be seen at a party like this. What do my friends think? Why, she's silly. Say, what do you mean by giving us all the creep? Oh, God, I can't tell you. No. You can't tell us. I can't tell Where's that stuff I planted here? Where's the money? Where's the money? You gave it to me to buy clothes! You dirty trollop! Fella. How does your money bounce up with your sales? Yeah, I hope so. It's my ragged rump luck to check up on my show on a day like this. I'm taking care of every gym where I took in here. I'm short. Must have been seen double. You're taking two bits for the hat. Somebody's got a quarter? Well, here. That looks like a fake along. Well, you scummy rats. What are you trying to rob me off today? Denison, Joe, but you fell scram here while I was out. Corey, let's have the few measly dollars you have to turn in. What's this? What's this, Corey, trying to push ten up on me? I? It will look okay to me. Yesterday killed the healer, today helping this swine rob me, you! Well, hey, you can't go that!
Why did you leave me so long? Davis, you're unbearable at times. Your mind is so twisted and warped that you can't tell the difference between ten minutes and ten hours. You accuse me of being mentally deficient? A mind that foretold the coming of all? And who warned you of the panic of 1929? <laughs> A mind that could do all that should be able to predict the end of a narcotic addict. Oh, I'm an addict, am I? You tipped off the bull. That's why they're watching me. You scurvy ingot. You dirty puke. Well, you worthless wreck of humanity. You disgrace to society. You mental and moral coward. You call me that? Why? Why? Nicky. Nicky. Don't leave me. Disgrace to society, mental and moral coward. Why does it mock us? Drum drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is by no means wise. One bucket, one drink of raging. Oh, God, there is nothing to. And to this. Look at me, God. Miserable thing that I am. Help. 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 God help me. Help. 